it really does give you pause that double the amount of people are visiting food banks. Tell us more about what Daily Bread is seeing at its food banks. Yeah, thanks for having me today. The unfortunate reality is, is our Who's Hunger report this year is quite grim. It took us about 30 years in Toronto to cross the 1 million threshold of food bank visits in the city. And then it took only two years to cross the 2 million mark. And it's only going to take one year. By the end of 2023, we will have crossed the 3 million visit mark. So we know people in our community are struggling with the immense cost of living and stagnating wages and income supports just not keeping pace. And who is going to the food bank? Does, does your work look into that? Does your research look into who is using the food bank? Absolutely. So, you know, everyone, a cross section of, of society is coming to the food bank. Uh, we continue to see a large number of people who are relying on fixed income, things like social assistance, seniors benefits, whose benefits just aren't able to keep up with the rising cost of rent, the rising cost of food, which has been growing so rapidly. But this year, what we're seeing is an increase in people who are employed coming to food banks. So amongst our new clients, we've seen about 120,000 new clients in the past year alone. And of those, about half have someone in their household who's employed. And so these are people who, you know, they're working and they still aren't able to afford their most basic necessities. If usage continues at this rate, what are you expecting to happen by even the end of this year? I think you, you do your reports from March to March, but what could happen in the next six or seven months? You know, food banks are really at their breaking point. We were never designed to be the sort of default uh, food security solution. We are an emergency food response. And, you know, as people struggle with making ends meet, there's also more people who are struggling to make donations potentially. And people who might have been donors are actually now potentially having to come to the food bank. And so without government action, I really don't know how we can continue on this trajectory. And so we're really trying to raise the alarm to, to all levels of government to say we need income supports, affordable housing, and to reduce precarious employment, because without those initiatives, we're just going to continue to see food bank use rise in the city. Christmas is right around the corner. What are food banks expecting to see this year? Will there be enough food available? You know, it's hard to tell. We've been very fortunate that the community has stepped up time and time again throughout the pandemic and now through um, the inflation challenges we're facing. So we've been really fortunate to have that community support. But this is the time of year where Canadians, you know, reflect on um, the gratitude that they have, the, the family, the community. And so it's a time where people um, look to support their community. And we hope people will do that as well. But we also hope, in addition to, you know, making a donation, looking to volunteer, that people will become advocates. People will contact their elected representatives and say, I don't want to see people in my community going hungry. And that's government's job to address through upstream policies that prevent food insecurity. So that's, I think, the number one thing people can be doing right now is contacting their elected representatives and sharing this report with them. Talia Bronstein, thank you so much for being with us today. Really appreciate it.